It's part of an ongoing research program that we have. The goal of the research program that we have is to regenerate damaged brain tissue. So when we started, we didn't start with fibromyalgia. We actually started with post stroke patient. We start from patient who have brain injury due to traumatic mechanical injury to the brain, traumatic brain injuries. And then to tell you the truth, the reason that we went into fibro, that's because my mother had suffered from severe fibromyalgia. And when it came to a point that my mother couldn't touch my children, I said, okay, this is, this is something real. This is real biology. It's not something emotional. It's not psychological. It's, it's a real thing. And then we started to dig into it. I, I'm fortunate enough to have a, quite a significant research group. I'm professor at the Tel Aviv University, the medical school, the neuroscience school, and I'm the head of the R&D in Shamir Medical Center in Israel. And then, then we started to dig into that. We didn't start it with this study. We started with a general pilot study that was conducted where we took fibromyalgia patients. And if I need to summarize to you 15 years in research in this field, today we understand that the problem in fibromyalgia is not in the location where you feel the pain. The problem in fibromyalgia is in the brain, in certain areas of the brain that are responsible for interpreting the signals that are coming from the body. So when the signal is going through the processing in the brain, it's being malinterpreted as pain. Even though you don't have a real problem in, in the location where you feel the pain. But this is a true biological thing, but the problem is in the brain and not, and not in the periphery. That's why we consider today fibromyalgia as the prototype of what we call central sensitization syndrome. Meaning we have oversensitization central, central nervous system, okay? Now, having that in mind, we know that today there can be several trigger that can cause this brain malfunctioning. The trigger can be as for example, traumatic brain injury when somebody had car accident and because of that you have concussion of the brain moving from one side to the other. If this location of the brain are being damaged, then the end results will be fibromyalgia. If somebody has, for example, certain kind of viruses that can damage the brain, EBV, CMV, COVID that may penetrate and that can be part of the post-COVID syndrome, then you will have fibromyalgia. If somebody had general anesthesia with fluctuation in the blood pressure, that can also culminate if that specific regions were, were damaged, but also a severe emotional stress. Okay, today we understand that severe emotional stress can actually cause biological damage that is not less in, in some circumstances even more severe than mechanical injury. So when we started the research program, we started with fibromyalgia in general not paying attention to the primary trigger. And after that, what we are doing now is every time we are focusing on a different subgroup of fibromyalgia. For example, the research before this last one, the focus was TBI, traumatic brain injury induced fibromyalgia, meaning concussion to the brain, mechanical injury, culminating fibromyalgia. We see the damage in the brain. We see it not with standard MRI, not with standard CT scan, by metabolic imaging of the brain. We are using SPECT scan to see the metabolic dysfunction. Okay, so the patient that are coming in, it's not only the syndrome, it's, it's seeing the, the damaged brain tissue. And in the last study that was just published, we focused on child abuse induced fibromyalgia. In most cases, it was sexual child abuse induced fibromyalgia. This is actually the second study that we are doing on child abuse induced fibromyalgia. In the first study, we took, we took adult females, adult females that 
were suffering from child abuse fibromyalgia and developed the fibromyalgia as consequence of that event. We had a treatment and control group in the first study, and we were able to demonstrate the injury in the brain, which is actually biological injury. It's not the imagination. It's not psychological. It's stress-induced, but, but it's a real biological damage. Treat them, recover. We are treating the malfunctioning brain tissue by inducing certain protocol that we use. It's unique protocol of, in a minute, we will get into that repairing the damaged tissue and then the symptoms improve not because we are working on the symptoms we are working on the brain and in this study it was a head-to-head -head study we took patients suffering from fibromyalgia due to child abuse and we compare the specific unique protocol that we use which we call hyperbaric oxygen therapy but that's a specific protocol in a minute we can get into that to understand what it means to the current pharmacological treatment that we have, head-to-head, -head, randomized them into two, and there was a significant improvement in the hyperbaric oxygen HBOT group as compared to the pharmaceutical group, and we can see the neuroplasticity in the brain. The beauty of that is that once you are repairing the brain tissue, it's yours. There is no deterioration afterwards. Unlike medication that are treating the symptoms here you are actually treating the core malfun the, the core injury in the brain okay so that's it's it's a long answer to a short question but but that's what it is <laughs> yeah so this is not a standard hbot what what we are doing is we are actually triggering, triggering stem cells that we have in the brain. It happens to be that in the brain, we have neuronal stem cells in a certain area of the brain. The highest concentration is in the hippocampus and the periventricular part of the brain. And by taking somebody into a suite, it's a big suite that you sit inside, you compress it with air, not with oxygen, and then you get the oxygen by mask. By increasing the pressure and having 100% oxygen by mask, we are enabling that more oxygen molecules will be transfused to the lungs, to the bloodstream, and the rest of the body. So that's one thing. But the real trick of that is that every 20 minutes, we ask the patient to take the mask off. And when they are taking the mask off, the oxygen is declining from very high back to the normal. This decline from very high back to the normal is being interpreted at the cellular level as hypoxia, as lack of oxygen, even though there is no, there is no hypoxia. And once, this is what we call the hyperoxic hypoxic paradox. And by doing that, we are inducing the stem cells to start to proliferate. We're inducing generation of new blood vessels, new neurons in the brain, and mitochondria are more active. And actually, we see that the malfunctioning tissue is being repaired. And once you are repairing this tissue, just like wounds that you have in other parts of your body, once you are repairing that tissue, whatever related to it will also be improved. So that's that's the protocol. It's a unique protocol. It's not a single day treatment protocol. It's actually 60 session, six zero, daily session, five days per week, uh, two hours each session. And the important thing with regard to that, especially in the US, if you want to do it, you need to do it in in adequate medical grade hyperbaric unit and not with the sack full of air or monotube or many things like that that are being mal used unfortunately taking our research and doing something that is not related that not the protocol not the equipment not the quality assurance so people should be aware of that only in medical grade facilities with a physician who knows what he's doing 